In this video, I want to talk about a key paper for understanding the historical context of user experience, user interface, and human-computer interaction, research, and development. And if your eyes glaze over when you hear that word history, just know that this is not just about the past, but also about the present and the future. I think that'll be clear by the time you get to the end of this video. The paper I want to discuss is called The Computer Reaches Out by Jonathan Gruden. Professor Gruden is a researcher at Microsoft. He's a professor of human-computer interaction, and over his long career, he's conducted a lot of groundbreaking work in collaborative software. So this paper was published in 1990, and fundamentally, it's trying to answer the question, where did the field of user interface research and development come from, and where is it going? So just to start with a brief definition of interface, this is the point of connection between a human and a computer. This is how the, how the human gives input to the computer, how the human gets output from the computer. Uh, nowadays, we're used to screen interfaces, including touch screens, and other ways we do input is through keyboard and mouse, but those aren't the only ways. So in this paper, Gruden looks at the evolution of computer interface development, okay? And the shift he sees is a gradual one from focusing on the hardware as the interface to software and software of higher and higher levels of abstraction. And as he talks about, more and more software and, and these more abstract forms of software are where companies see the greatest competitive advantage and the most money to be made and the most innovation to be had, really. So he sees this process as moving outward from the computer. As he says in the title of the paper, the computer is reaching out into the human environment, extending its knowledge into the mind of the user. Gruden in this paper identifies five phases of interface development, which he uh, shows illustrated in this, in this nice chart you see here. The first phase, starting in the 1950s, is at the level of hardware, where the hardware itself is the interface. At this time, the only users were really engineers, experts. They were working directly with the hardware, doing things, for example, like having to memorize and work with specific memory locations. Okay, Starting in the 1960s through the 70s, the focus moved to software. And now the users were primarily programmers. They didn't need to know so much about the hardware. They didn't need to worry about memory locations and all of that stuff. Starting in the 70s through the 90s, Gruden expects, uh, the main focus of interface development was in interactive systems. This is getting into more what we think of as, as user interface, right? Like a graphic user interface on our computers. At this point, users became non-programmers. They used displays and keyboards to manage information and complete tasks. At this level, let's think about things like spreadsheets and word processors. Now things start to get really interesting. At the fourth phase, we have the interface as a kind of interactive dialogue. Think of the computer as a partner in back and forth complex tasks between the person and the computer. At this point, interface designers and researchers were interested in things like modeling users, supporting people over long spans of time. We also see a shift from just user interface to this newer term, user experience, which is trying to be more holistic and capture more of the, the experience, the, the feelings, the emotions, um, the time span of working with a computer to do things. And then we get to the fifth stage, which is not just one person and one computer, but the computer system as part of a work setting, where systems now are trying to help organizations, trying to help people work together through computers. The computer may even fade into the background, not seen, even though it's kind of indispensable. At this phase, think of things like email systems, project management systems, decision support systems. Gruden sees this, this phase just starting in 1990, and he foresees that it's going to be a key one going forward. So in the paper, Gruden talks about all the ways that research and development evolved throughout these phases. And if you're interested in those details, I would suggest digging into the paper. In 1990, when Gruden first presented this work, he saw that the field was predominantly in phase number three, so interactive systems. And as we've progressed through the phases, and here, speaking in the 2020s now, we can look you know, with, with the benefit of hindsight, we can see how we've moved through these. Methods for evaluation got more complex and less precise, and also evaluation got more and more expensive. There's more unknowns when you get into multiple humans in, in the loop here. Um, and also, interestingly, the duration of things being studied grew. We moved from milliseconds to days, weeks, months, and beyond. 
Now, over the past 20 years, so well after Gruden wrote this paper, the major focus in UX and HCI research and development, I think, has been in numbers four and five. Of course, we still do work in all five of these spaces, and Gruden makes that point. But the question is, where's the biggest focus, and where is the greatest place for companies to have a competitive advantage and really advance their business interests? So, all in all, this is the computer reaching out. As Gruden writes, Throughout this whole process, the computer is colonizing its environment. It's kind of a scary metaphor that he uses. He acknowledges that maybe a nicer way to say it, he says, is computers are progressively learning more about the world around them and then also sort of um, implicating themselves in that world. Now, it's been over 30 years since this paper appeared, and it's amazing, I think, to see how much of it still rings true. Maybe all the more so when we think about this learning issue that I just mentioned, when we think about today's machine learning and AI-enabled interfaces. Just to give one example, we can look at Apple. Apple, you may know, began as a hardware company, and now it still makes hardware. iPhone, for example, is a huge part of its uh, sales, about half of its revenue, um, and that's been pretty stable, as you can see in this chart. But what sets Apple apart more and more is the software that powers that hardware experience. And also, interestingly, over the past 10 years, you can see that its revenues from digital services has been growing as a share of its overall revenue. So this points me to my next question is, where next? This paper was written in 1990, and back then, the workplace and the organizational setting was about as far as Gruden could see on the horizon. But I think now we can see there's another broader layer out. Maybe we could call it the sixth phase. And I think um, maybe a good name for it would be the platform focus, where the platform is the interface now. You may have heard terms like the platform economy, platform capitalism, platform business models. Today's startups often strive to be platform companies. And also today's biggest tech companies like Amazon, like Airbnb, these are platform companies. This is the phase of many interlinked devices, APIs that are connecting services together, even across businesses. It's the age of everything stores and horizontal integration. For example, thinking of Amazon, which began as a bookstore to selling all sorts of goods, to expanding into movies and grocery and healthcare and who knows what else. Um, this is the phase where information and data Data science, these are more important to the user experience and the interface than the physical assets that are part of the business. Okay, and so in some ways, the interface is the whole point of the business. And so the point that I keep making here is, where are the biggest business gains to be made? Today, it's at this platform level. This is where the biggest competitive advantages are to be found. It's where the most design opportunities are. And consequently, it's at this level of platform and societal issues where much of the current work in HCI and UX are happening. And what comes after that? I don't know. Check back in in another 30 years.